Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers Summer Circuit. This is the final day of feature tournament number four. I'm TJ, joined once again by Trump. Trump, how are you doing on this fine morning? Ah, <laughs> doing all right. It is pretty early here on the West Coast, but it's a great morning to wake up and watch some intense Hearthstone action. Of course, so far for the Summer Circuit season, we've had 16 open qualifiers, 8 from EU, 8 from North America, 3 feature tournaments, and today the open circuit, at least, is going to come to a close, and we're going to find the 8th and final person that will be joining us at the Grand Finals at the end of August at PAX in Seattle to compete for $25,000. Trump, you'll be there yourself, and uh, are you excited for the, for the finals at PAX? Yep, and looking forward to see who my competition is going to be. Yeah, so so far we have um, uh, the feature tournament number one winner was Calento, number two was Pavel, and of course number three was Trump. So those are going to be the three players that have won features. Today we'll find the fourth. Uh, the most Geico points from EU is Hoy. Uh, the most Geico, second most Geico points from EU was Tom, so those two players will be joining us at PAX. And then of course for NA it's going to be Wofster from Complexity, and of course Nossum from Grand National Champions. So today it's either going to be Dart, Silent Storm, Chalky, or Strife Girl. A pretty stacked lineup as we move into the semifinals of this feature tournament. Now keep in mind today, uh, these players are bringing a fourth deck as all of the game matches today are going to be best of seven. Uh, but all the players had to submit a fourth deck, a, a designated fourth deck, um, at before the feature tournament. So they couldn't like see what their opponents were bringing and then pick their fourth deck, they were all submitted at the exact same time. So it's going to be interesting to see what these players choose to bring as that that fourth and final deck. We can see Dart, uh, he chose Hunter, I believe, since he had Warrior, Warlock, Rogue. And uh, Silent Storm actually chose Warrior. He, we we uh, commended him for his performance across the tournament but from for not bringing Warrior. He had Druid, Paladin, Warlock, which was a little bit of a different lineup. But now he is bringing out that warrior. So now that we've seen updated lineups from these players, Trump, what do you what do you think of uh, this this first semifinal? All right. Well, Dart is bringing what I would consider to be the most standard lineup. Uh, warrior, Warlock, Hunter are probably the three you see the most often, and Rogue is a, often a fourth one you see. So on Storm has decided to add in Warrior, um, which might either mean that he thinks that Patron Warrior is good enough to put as his fourth deck, even though he thinks everyone is gunning for it. Or he thinks, or he's bringing Control Warrior to kind of continue his anti-patron strategy. It's not mm -hmm. really anti-patron because he does have that Paladin, which I think is a weak link against uh, Patron. But granted, we haven't seen much of Silent Storm's unique take on Paladin played before. Yeah, it's very true. Uh, Silent Storm over. I've watched him pretty extensively over the course of his uh, his competitive career so far since I uh, was a part of the tournaments that he sort of got a breakthrough with. Um, with the Legendary series, but uh, he, I've honestly haven't seen him play Patron very very often. I'd be surprised if it was Patron. Uh, I would expect it to be Control Warrior, but we'll definitely have to see. I wouldn't put it past him to maybe throw a curveball. Patron is a really strong deck. He might recognize this, and I feel like he 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 needs to bring it. So we're gonna jump into the first matchup. It is going to be Silent Storm on the Handlock, and Dart's gonna throw it his rope first. Huh, I, well, according to me, at least, the classic matchup, just because I have played the handlock side so often. Um, this, depending on who you ask, as usual, people tell you which side is favored. I am personally on the side of the handlock. All right. Well, I am personally on the side of the rogue. So, it's a little bit of a, of a rivalry going on there, Trump. It's handlock players always think they're favored in the matchup, and rogue players always think that they're favored in the matchup. You need to ask an, an arbitrary third party uh, who doesn't play either rogue or handlock to see who's favored. But then they probably wouldn't have a good sample size enough to go. But um, I, I, I'm actually I'm just kidding. I do think uh, handlock is slightly favored, but uh, rogue does have tools nowadays to combat it. They can sort of play it like druid, where they just sort of try and remove, use their spells to gain lots of tempo early on and then have big combo turns later on with oils and flurries. That's right. That is usually how they win. And, ooh, Sunstorm draws the Mortal Coil. Really good. He can uh, do that with the tap. And his play is exactly lining up how he wants to. 
Uh, he also does have that Lotheb in his deck, which does make this matchup slightly better for him. Dart does have Sap. Now, one of the keys to this matchup is being pretty conservative with your Sap. Uh, you can use it to gain tempo early on, which uh, I like as a play, but sometimes it can come back to bite you if the next turn he just replays it or plays an even bigger threat. And uh, Dart's going to, it looks like he's going to do it just for the tempo, which is a pretty good idea considering he already has a lot of burn plus a prep in his hand. If he draws into an oil, all of a sudden he's looking at a potential lethal opportunity as early as next turn. So that's a that's a pretty big deal uh, considering. Otherwise, I'd probably hold on to that sap. Right. Dart's hand is highly variable based on whether or not he can get a weapon buff because he has those two blade flurries which are currently near worthless. The preparation is too much mana. But there's opportunity to be had, and Dart does push through with that sap early, get that extra four damage in. And just slow Silent Storm down by a turn. Ooh, another Eviscerate. Wow, this is a lot of damage, but it's also a lot of cards used. He's using this prep, and he really doesn't even have the mana to utilize all of his cards even. He's just going to try and uh, uh, cycle through his deck. Oh wow. my gosh. Picks what up is the that? Azure Drake. That's incredible. That's good. He was uh, clearly hoping for something to play, probably a minion, and that is pretty much the dream. Uh, that or Loth, uh, really. And now all of a sudden, Silestorm's in a little bit of a pickle here. He's staring at two scary creatures on the board. Uh, this is one of the, the issues with handlock sometimes is it takes a while to get going. It takes a while to sort of come online here, and if your first threat doesn't stick on the board... You can fall behind. It's sort of the same with Druid. If a Druid can just keep removing your creatures and building up their own board, eventually they'll just be vulnerable to combo. And is that lethal? He's got 11 with the Eviscerate. Uh, and yeah, that is lethal. Uh, Deadly Poison makes that 3. The Blade Flurry is 4. The Eviscerate is 5, so 9. No, never mind. It's one off. If he had a fresh dagger. Right. Uh, he'd be able to get the attack in, but yeah, he or is if he had one off. another two mana, but he's yeah. clearly very close. But very close isn't quite cutting it here. Yeah, it's Soundstorm can start next turn, maybe healing up, building up a little bit of a wall. He could start fighting back on board with this Twilight Drake. So you can't really go for it as the rogue because one of the ways you get locked out of the game is. Molten Giants, because it's really hard for you to get through Taunt, especially after using both Eviscerates. That's right. Uh, one of the things that Dark can do, and it looks like he's planning to do... Oh, no, he's not. Um, I was thinking he was going to force Silent Storm to use an antique heal bot so that uh, the board could possibly not be cleared. Um, but the problem with that is you could get Molten Gianted and then Taunted and then Antique Heal Botted. Uh, basically, any play that Dart makes has a risk of getting that Molten Giant Taunt and anti kill butt. Uh, but Sunstorm only has one piece of those three. Yeah. Still, though, he's going to be safe if Dart whiffs on drawing into direct damage. He's going to go back up to 15. Maximum damage that Dart can do this turn would be, uh, well, that changes things. I... Still think he's off by a couple, actually. 3, 6, 10, 14. He's off by one again. One? Okay. Still, though, I think he sort of needs to go for it. He realized Soundstorm does not have Moltens because he would have played them for free last turn, as being he was at 7 health. So at this stage, he really just needs to make sure that he gets all of his... Um, his like weapon damage and creature damage into the face so he can save his spells uh, for next turn uh, for direct damage. And he could put right. him as low as 2 health. Yeah, or as low as 1, but uh, he's going to use his Blade Flurry. This has the... This also kills the Drake, which means that both the Edwin Van Cleef as well as the spell uh, threaten Silentstorm, and that's a big deal because he could block. He could have blocked the spell with Lotheb, and he could have blocked the minion with Sludge Belcher. But uh, with the double threat coming, Silentstorm cannot handle both of them. Additionally, he can't tap. Yeah, 
and it looks like uh, that is just going to be game. Dart does have the direct damage from hand, and uh, very well played by him. Um, he was one damage off lethal a few times, but in the end it doesn't even matter, and uh, SI7 agent would have been even a little bit of overkill. So, Dart going into game number one. Definitely a solid game plan, and he's going to take the win over the handlock. Yeah, during play, and you can see how close that was, and that dart was almost out of steam. If Sunstorm had gotten perhaps a Molten Giant and a Taunt, maybe that would have been enough to block uh, just enough, or perhaps another heal bot. And dart, if he had whiffed on one of the draws, that would have been just slow enough. Um, he was fortunate enough to draw into the weapon buffs to go with his blade flurries, and it was still really close because... Um, to be fair, Dart didn't have the perfect set of cards either. Could have gotten an oil somewhere in there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he had lethal as early as turn 5 if he had drawn into an oil, because he could have prepped out an oil, blade flurried, and eviscerated. Uh, which would have been even overkill for lethal, which was kind of funny as early as turn 5. And that's the nature of the matchup. If you get the draws, you get the draws. And Soundstorm now a game down. Um, but this is a best of 7 series, keep in mind. So it's it's a long one. If you you're gonna fall behind, that's just uh, the nature of of competitive Hearthstone. Is sometimes you have to uh, learn how to fight your way back from behind. Soundstorm's definitely confident in his lineup. Uh, we'll see how he's what he's what he's gonna throw out next. And Dart has rounded off his lineup with a hunter, so he's sort of got the, the those four classes that um, maybe with the exception of Rogue in place of Druid that are considered the strongest right now. Alright, if there's any consolation for Sunstorm, it's that that Paladin has one less bad matchup. One of the risks of bringing Paladin is to go into a Rogue in a Patron lineup. Alright, and yeah. we've got Zoo from Dart with a special Acidic Swamp Ooze just for all those pesky weapon classes. Sunstorm with a weapon class, the good old Patron. Good old Patron. A classic Zoo versus Patron showdown, one in which we'll see whether or not the Zoo manages to put on enough pressure before the Zoo, before the Patron gets to turn eight with a, those exact two cards. I'm really surprised that Talonstorm opted to bring the Patron Warrior. It's a deck that he doesn't play very often. At least, in, at least from what I've seen in tournament settings, but it, it's such a strong deck. It is, I guess. Uh, oh, well, that's a really good draw. I guess when it comes down to having to bring a fourth deck, it's just all right. Fine. Uh, this is some. A lot of people think of this is the first strongest. I've been avoiding it, but when it comes to like the fourth deck, fine. I'll uh, I'll join in the crowd. <laughs> I'll cave in. That was yeah, an interesting a... bit of decision making from Dart. Looked obvious. I think he's trying to pull some kind of bluff. Oh man, I have so many choices on turn one. Not many choices on turn two, though. And yeah, this is a pretty impressive curve from Dart. Going Flame and Pawn and Creeper into Imp Gang Boss. It's such a tough thing to deal with if you're if you're the warrior player. That it is. Um, he did hesitate quite a bit before keeping his Creeper Imp Gang Boss Ooze Hand, and it is right to hesitate because that isn't a lot of pressure against the Warrior. The Flame Imp pick up really helped out. But Soundstorm not drawing into any weapons here. He's got a lot of cycle in his hand with both Acolytes, both Gnomish, plus a Battle Rage, but. Other than that, he's sort of lacking on the removal part of things, which is you need cycle removal and then you combo, is, is how the Patron Warrior usually plays, and Soundstorm only has one of those pieces right now. That's right. This is one of those matchups where if you're running only a 1x version, then you are going to be hurting a bit. We can see Soundstorm has two Gnomish Inventor. That's one of the cards you might cut for a second War Axe. So... Uh, that would naturally make this matchup just a little bit worse. Uh, Dart with a pretty good start. When you see five minions on the 
Warlock side, no real way to counter it. That's looking good. And Soundstorm finds his death spot, and that's going to be a big deal in catching him up. Um, he's going to be able to clear either the Creeper or the Imp King boss. There is a news. So that's going to come down. And even though there's some one health creatures on the board, overall, it's a net even for Dart at the end of the day, since he gets an extra Imp from the Imp Gang boss, and he gets two extra spiders from the Haunted Creeper. Uh, he played it well, knowing that he was probably going to uh, ooze a death bite at some point. He decided to use his Abusive Sergeant on his Imp Gang boss last turn, um, wasting a little bit of damage, getting a little bit of overkill on the Accolade of Pain, but in turn saving the first Haunted Creeper body in order to make sure that a Whirlwind wouldn't uh, clear his board as much. That's right, that's fight. Uh, he was so big there. Uh, Silentstorm right now, he's just got a hand that's too slow. At this point, you can't play any of your cycle cards. The Gnomish Inventors are too slow. The Accolade of Pain is far too slow. So he's pretty much going to be forced to play like the Taskmaster is the one that's quick, so he has to play it, and then uh, with the spare ban, he plays the Acolyte. Yeah. It's going to be rough. Going to be rough. Dart looks like he's in a pretty commanding position so far. He's applying a decent amount of pressure as well, which is something that you said early on. His hand wasn't best suited for it. The Flame Imp helped... Uh, the ooze definitely helped, and now Soundstorm's sitting at 15 health. Oh, but Soundstorm picked up the Warsong Commander, and one of the things uh, that you look for when you're Patron Warrior against Zoo specifically is to get that um, Emperor Thorosan either on 5 or 6, and then follow up with Warsong Commander Grim Patron. And he's got it uh, up to Dart to see whether how well he can handle his board to counter that. He doesn't have any buffs, unfortunately, so... He is going to just have to face down the Warsong Grim Patron. Fortunately for Dart, Soundstorm doesn't have a Whirlwind yet. He's got Malganus and a Void Caller oh, on the board. Oh, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. That's going to actually uh, make it so that the Imp, both of the Imps don't die. So now Warsong Commander Grim Patron just doesn't do anything. Dark could it even does implosion absolutely nothing. Here. Yeah, Dark could even implosion here. So what Soundstorm needs is he needs like a... A whirlwind effect off the top and shield block into an execute, or the other way around. I guess it doesn't matter, but that's like his going to be his only way out of this. And even then, I mean, he's going to be sitting at what twelve health. He's going to yeah, he's going to or sorry, three health. He's going to take twelve damage. This okay, he's going to trade one in, so nine damage this turn. But still, uh, this is he needs exactly a couple, a couple of different cards here too in order to be able to come back on the board. Frothy Berserker is not it, so I don't think he can draw into anything that's going to help him out. He can Battle Rage for one. He can Shield Block for two. But one of these cards has to be a Whirlwind Effect. One of them has to be an Execute. Inner Rage is one. He can afford to no Mission Bender also, since it only costs three mana. But he desperately needs... And execute. Right. Oof, Dart just uh, able to take off the gates with a really good curve, both the first game and this one. Um, Sunstorm just looking for that survival execute oh, here. He can, he can Warsong coin Grim Patron and interrage it so that way he can trade in one of the, both Grim Patrons into the Malganus. Oh, that is ugly, but all right. It keeps him alive by a reasonable amount of health, but now his patron and his Warsong commander are gone. So it's going to be really tough for him to fight back for the board after this. Ooh, Defender Vargas. Yep, Dart's currently looking at a little bit off lethal, six off lethal. Uh, with this an implosion, he could conceivably put Silentstorm 3 off lethal. He just saw a Grim Patron plus Warsong Commander, so he's going to be much more liberal in his usage of the implosion. Gets the 4, but that's pretty much a 2 or a 3. 
Well, a two would have been quite bad. How does Silent Storm come back from this point? Despite doesn't do anything because at one he... point or another with Patron Warrior, you sometimes come back. You're at the point of no return. Theoretically, though, if he did have a Warsling Commander and a Grim Patron, he could actually clear the board. And he could actually have made a comeback from that. Melganis put a wrench in that plan. It did. Melganis coming up at just the right time and Dart like curving out perfectly here. All right, Salasum goes ahead and concedes, and Dart is up two to zero in the series so far. Two pretty decisive victories from his end. The first one was a little bit closer, but that one, uh, Salasum was on the verge of stabilization, I suppose. But the Melganis just really locked him out of the game, having to use Warsong, Grim Patron, and Inner Rage just to take out the Malganis. So Dart's just a patron warrior, and Hunter went away from securing his spot in the finals. Yeah, Dart uh, began in the group stage uh, last time he played. Off to a 0-3 start, so he's got to be very happy that this time around he can relax a little bit more with a 2-0 start. Uh, his games going into these finals, these semifinals, were really close, and I'm sure he would be uh, looking forward to getting a 4-0 for once. I've only seen one 4-0 in the semifinals. I'm not sure in the feature tournament number three I was I was absent. Was there any 4-0s in, in the feature number three in the semifinals? Do you remember? Not that I recall. It is very, very difficult to do that. We did yeah. have a surprising amount of 3-0s in the prelims or group stages this time around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Colento in his semifinals in feature tournament number one 4-0'd his opponent, but that's the only one that I've seen. Of course, Colento would take the only 4 I don't remember who he was playing against. It was the other invited player for the week, but I, I, I'm pretty sure, but I can't quite remember. Um, all right, Patron Warrior for Dart, and Silent Storm sort of reads that. He's going to throw out the handlock to try and put himself on the board. This is a good matchup. Yeah. Just Dart uh, takes stock of his hand, notices that he doesn't have Emperor Thorstan or any whirlwind effects. And he decides to go with the early frothing berserker, quote unquote, tempo play. Yeah, but this is pretty good for Dart, at least based off of his information, because he's got slam execute, so he can start pressuring with this frothing berserker. Soundstorm does have dark bomb mortar coil to be able to deal with this. Um, it is going to interrupt his sludge belcher, but it could be a little risky to leave a frothing berserker up on the board, even if it is this early in the game. Hmm. Darta uh, is really pushing the aggressive agenda here, Us even using his coin just to put a 1-4 out on the board. Yeah, it's a 1-4 that also has the potential to buff the Frothing Berserker, um, which could possibly mean it represents a little bit more damage. But yep, Sunstorm does have the answer. And it's up to Ooh. Dart to put something together at this point. Yeah, yeah. Emperor Thorson's nice, but uh, if the game goes on a little bit longer, which is almost like as soon as next turn, Dart has to really strongly consider not playing that because it only buffs uh, one relevant card right now, the Grim Patron. Uh, unstable gold too, but that's only semi-relevant. If he picks up a Warsong Commander, it might be all he needs. He's actually uh, put on a decent amount of pressure so far. Soundstorm's not really hitting his big threats here. Uh, he does have Sludge Belcher, but, I mean, his first Twilight Drake was dealt with. He doesn't have second Twilight Drake or Mountain Giant. So he just has to play a BGH to try and contest the board here. And Dart might be confident that Emperor Thorsen is just going to stick on the board. So he might just play it and... I mean, force Silence Storm to deal with it, which could be tough. He'd have to have some type of direct removal, like a Siphon Soul. He's seen an Owl, too, so... I mean, this Emperor Thorsan is just going to stick. That's right. Emperor Thorsan is uh, really hard to deal with from the Hamlock point of view. If 
they have absolutely nothing out. Uh, Silent Storm would need nearly exactly Shadow Flame, which he doesn't. So Silent Storm faced with a pretty big headache here. I guess if there's anything going for Silent Storm, though, it's that Emperor Thorsan isn't as scary as it looks. Uh, it's only reducing the cost of Grim Patrons right now, pretty much. He's a wild animal. Though I should say, from Silent Storm's perspective, he should feel like he's lost because, ugh, I let that Emperor Thorsan go off twice. Ooh! Dart's cat just took the thing off the wall. <laughs> I couldn't have been the only one that saw that. I saw a tail. That's His all. cat just went ham. Wow. Sorry, I was slightly distracted by the feral cat that came into Dart's room and took down his poster off of his wall. Wow. Okay, back what to the What a dangerous game. and exciting game this is. Yes. Yes, it is. Well, Dart still needs to pick up a Warsong Commander if he wants a chance for, for victory here. He's starting to get to that point where he's going to get locked out and... He's roping out here, and he sort of throws out this Grim Patron on a little bit of a whim. I guess oh, he realizes man, he even sort of hits. All in. Whew. Okay, Darts is playing this game so hopeful this turn. I wonder if he was distracted by the cat. He, I don't think he even saw. Oh, he sees it. Okay. Sorry, cat. Your fun is done. And uh, Dart. I mean, I guess he realized in this matchup, you sort of have to take risks. You have to play sort of unnecessarily aggressive at at some points. If you think your hand's not going to play out how how you want it, then just go all in and right. Hope Man, Soundstorm got a uh, great bomb off there. He did draw the Hellfire, and he was probably intending to use it. But now that that bomb has uh, destroyed the Grim Patron, he does not have to. Yeah, now double Moltens. He's got Sun Fury Protector. And next turn, he's got a heal bot. And to be honest, yeah, I like him holding off on the Agent Watcher. At this point, there's no point in playing the Agent Watcher because without it being taunted up, the only thing it does is give Frothing Berserkers another target to be whirlwinded down and, and extra damage. So, so really um, nice spot by him. And right, it's interesting. It looked so good for Dart. The opening was strong, and then he had that Emperor Thor sand go uncontested. But I suppose from Dart's uh, point of view, what got, what went horribly wrong is lack of any card draw. Yeah. And now, all of a sudden, Dart's on a clock here. Going to take a buttload of damage, and he's dead next turn, unless he can find lots of executes. And that's not an execute, and no cycle in the hand, no nothing. So that is going to be it. Dart chooses death, goes ahead and concedes. Soundstorm puts himself on the board. Series is now two to one, still in favor of Dart, but Soundstorm does have the momentum in his favor. Yep. Uh, so Soundstorm, at this point, he's got a few. All of his matchups are actually either good or bad. So that is to say, uh, the Paladin is good against the Hunter, but bad against the Warrior. The Druid is good against the Warrior, but bad against the Hunter, probably. Depending on what flavor of uh, Hunter Dart decided to bring. This is his fourth deck, so we don't know what type of Hunter it is. And um, and Patron. We'll see how Sunstorm manages to navigate this Patron matchup. And it looks like it's going to be a mirror matchup. So, Silent Storm. Um, I mean, to be honest, his other two matchups against Patron aren't that great. He's got Paladin, and he's got Druid. So if he can win this mirror matchup, that's going to be a really big deal for him. Because then he it opens up his Paladin to be able to go up against Hunter and to be able to go up against the... Um, the Patron Warrior. Ah... Yeah, I guess that's not that great. But still, uh, taking the mirror matchup is going to be a big deal. Yeah, winning games is good. Yeah. So uh, both players are looking for that 
elusive turn five patron win. Um, currently, Dart has one piece of the combo with Inner Rage. Sunstorm with two pieces of the combo with Deathbite and Inner Rage. Uh, Dart picks up a second piece of the combo, a pretty important one, the Grim Patron. Um, without, he actually has three pieces of the combo. Um, Deathbite usually is better, but turn six, Grim Patron, Inner Rage, Whirlwind. That's the stuff as well. Yeah, Soundstorm picks up his own patron, though. He's about in the same spot. And he is just going to coin out the Death Bite. A little bit forward, it is one turn away from Harrison Jones. I can't remember if Dart does run that, but it means he's going to be able to get value off of it if he chooses to. Wow, double whirlwind, okay. Uh, the thing about Dart's hand, though, is he doesn't really have anything to play other than just all in on patrons. He's got a little bit of cycle with Slam, but that's about it. Silencer has a little bit more of a diverse hand, I suppose. He's got Psycho with Shield Block, No Wish and Banner. Also has the Battle Rage, which can be pretty key. And I'd be really surprised if Dart attacks here, because it would just put him down into Battle Rage range. But right. Um, having an all-in hand, though, sounds bad. So I'd like to wordplay it to be more like, Dart has a really focused hand, and the exact <laughs> three cards he needs to win this matchup. Uh, that is usually how it goes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he can start making patience as early as next turn. And the Harrison oh, Jones boom. off the top. And this lines up perfectly because he has a Fiery War Axe equipped to deal with exactly the three damage that he needs to get through this Gnomish Inventor also. Fortune truly smiles on Dart today. Yes, it does. And next turn, he can go off with patrons. And now... His focused hand is becoming a little more diverse, and it's looking even better and better for Dart as the as the game progresses. Yep, easy play from Dart this turn. Uh, when you get the chance to make four patrons on either turn five or six, you take it. And Solid Storm sometimes has an answer, but without a weapon in hand, it makes it a lot harder. Or perhaps I should even say nearly impossible. No matter what his hand was, uh, without a weapon already equipped, it becomes nearly impossible. Uh, he gets the weapon. The weapon is necessary to take down one of the full health ones, and then like one of the few ways to take out another full health one is Shield Slam, if you're even running it. Well, so this is uh, one of the lines of patron play that you can take, is saying, well, I'm not going to win the patron war, so I'm going to all in on the Froth and Berserker combo. And the thing about that is, Patron Warriors, they flood the board, which gives you more Warwind targets to buff up a Frothing Berserker. Silent Storm can start counting lethal as early as next turn. Because he's got multiple Warwind effects, plus Frothing Berserker, Warsong Commander. If he picks up a Frothing Berserker, all of a sudden he's looking at a situation where he could just kill Dart outright. That's right, Dart is a little bit wary of it. Or is he going to just... That? It? Oh boy. Okay. So with... This is going to put uh, six creatures on Dart's board. So with Warsong Commander, uh, Frothing Berserker, Whirlwind, uh, that would be nine creatures on the board. Um, it would go down to eight, but then it would go back up. So that would be 28 damage from... Whirlwind effects alone on the Frothing Berserker with three Whirlwind effects, which he does not have. He only has two. Right, so but he can did he... pick up the third one if he can survive this turn. Uh, Dart only has 18, 21 damage showing. So uh, if Sunstorm's at five above, that's actually a pretty safe number given that Dart only has one spot left on his board and a very small hand. Um, does some calculations. Don't think there's lethal this turn, but he'll want to make sure, of course. Uh, perhaps yeah. he's deciding whether or not to do Battle Rage. Does make a lot of sense to Battle Rage since this is his final turn, perhaps. S Slam ends up being more damage, or taking off more damage than armoring up, but it leaves another space on the board, which gives Dart another opportunity to go for. So, Dart has 18 damage. 
He needs six. Is there a way for him to find six? He can slam into something. Um, he can get three extra damage if he wars on commanders and slams one of his patrons. But then he needs... No, he, I don't think he'd be able to do it. Yep, that seems to be the extent. Yeah. Does Dark um, have it? Or does Sunstorm have it then? <laughs> yes. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Yep, like you said, three uh, whirlwind effects. That's a big board. Uh, the whirlwind, the first one hits nine, the second one hits approximately eight. Third one hits something like uh, seven? Still, no, be because there will be more. Uh, no, because the first one, yeah. It'll go down a little bit. But then I think it'll go back up. And he can play the Armorsmith as well, so that's another Whirlwind effect. Or that's another creature for Whirlwind right. effect. The Armorsmith so, uh, is going to help out a lot. <clears throat> yeah. Um, if it wasn't enough already. Mm -hmm. Sequenced nicely here. So he gets the Whirlwind effect first on the uh, Unstable Ghoul. He's going to get the second Whirlwind effect on the Unstable Ghoul as well. And... Then he just needs to throw in the Unstable Ghoul and throw the Frothing Berserker at the face, and I believe that'll be it. Hold on. Oh, that's that's pretty good, too. That maximizes damage. I didn't see the Inner Rage on an opponent's patron creating one more whirlwind, which might yeah. mean he was good without the Armor Smith. Yeah. The tricky um, thing about the Inner Rage is that uh, it was... Well, he, he. I think putting he, on the armor smith actually would have been the most damage. Maybe. No, no. Well, because he gets two extra whirlwind effects on the extra patron. Yeah. It ends up being really close, like plus or minus one, or maybe yeah. even zero. Yeah. E either way, I, I believe he he had lethal because this is going to be like thirty-five damage. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Throws in the armor smith as well. It makes it uh, 37. And, yep. Pretty much wow. empties his hand. Soundstorm's with, left with only a Fiery War X left in his hand. So he went all in. And that's, again, that's a line of play that Page and Warrior can take. It's A lot of times it comes down to the first player to put pages on the board. But if one player draws on a lot of pieces of the combo, Soundstorm uh, realized his opportunity, realized he wasn't going to be able to deal with the patrons. So he just left him on the board and went all in on that play, and it worked out. Yeah, that's really interesting to see how there's, like, a main... I'd say uh, patron versus patron is, like, a matchup which is characterized by overarching story. And it's, like, sometimes... Uh, usually get the first patron start, and then either you have the counter patron, or you have the Emperor Thor sent into the charging play, or you have losing. And it's, like, just branching things depending on how the hand holds up. Uh, Sandstorm mm -hmm. managing to just use every single card of his hand. So we're moving in to the Paladin matchup. So Soundstorm, I think, is pretty confident in this matchup, actually. Which is a little weird, because it's it's definitely considered one of the stronger ones for Patron and one of the weaker ones for Paladin. But this deck specifically for Soundstorm is teched against it. Uh, he's got double Owl, he's got double Defender of Argus. No Quartermaster, which sometimes is considered weak in the matchup, but he makes up for it with, like, stronger, um, like, board... Uh, I don't want to say stronger board tools. I don't know. Stronger disrupt disruption tools, I guess, with Defender of Argus and Owl. So, it's interesting. Yeah. Very um, utility-heavy, I guess. And it's tough to find the places for the utility to exceed that of just normally strong cards, but Sunstorm finds a way to make it happen. Um, Soundstorm's hedging quite a bit against Whirlwind here, and is just getting the extra damage guaranteed in on the Armor Smith. Um, the Acolyte of Pain is really scary if Dart is privy to the fact that Soundstorm runs two owls. Which he should be, and this is really greedy. That's right. Uh, normally you wouldn't get, well, normally you wouldn't get punished much by it, but Soundstorm does run to Defender of Argus, and 
a 2-2 two -two hitting into a 1-2 means that you don't actually kill off one of the recruits. Yeah. Uh, Dart does have the whirlwind effects available to him, and he is going to get two draws on Acolyte, so the owl's not going to connect early on. Wow, this is actually huge I'd draw. Say, wow, I'd say a really solid hand for for Dart right now. It's one of those dream scenarios. I'm a little surprised by this. I thought Acolyte of Pain Whirlwind would be a. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. Maybe um, Acolyte of Pain Whirlwind risked the overdraw. One of the first world problems. Yeah, looks like he's gonna coin out Armorsmith as well. Oh, he's gonna think about it. Might feel like he needs to protect that second Armorsmith since he used the first one, and it is vulnerable to True Silver Champion. Yep, and he holds on to it. I'm actually a little bit surprised that Dart uh, considered it. Um, I'm someone who holds the coin to a very high regard, uh, possibly in the in too much of the other direction. And by holding the coin, he manages to get the Thoris in out. Um, though it should require a bit of thinking first, because there are very few combo pieces. He's like, yes, I drew Thoris in. I have such a big hand. But I only really reduce usefully the Frothing Berserker. Yeah. Unsipagul also, I would say, is considered a combo piece. But no Warsong, no Patron, uh, no Whirlwind. Ooh. The Peacekeeper is a decent draw, but still, he doesn't have a way to deal with the... Yeah, it would. He has Forest. to deal with this, so he has to go with Blessing of Kings. Uh, Dart was perhaps hoping for that world where that survives twice, and it was possible. Uh, Sunstorm had only four damage showing. Yeah. So we'll see if Sunstorm can pressure enough because he's definitely going to be on a clock. For Dart to draw into patrons or even Warsong is starting to get close to lethal ranges with uh, with how many of these cards are reduced and with whirlwind effects in the hand. So he's right, and this kind of showcases a problem right now with uh, Paladin against patron or mid range against patron. I should say the pressure is very hard to put together as a Paladin and there's no burst at the end. So this is it. And Solid Storm is quickly running out of cards. He's going to have to like draw out the game with the hero powers just to get that extra bit of power on the board. Uh, his hand is very mediocre right now with a BGH, which is just a 4-2, and Aldor, which is just the 3-3, and a Muster for Battle, which is just 3 one ones, which would get wiped by Whirlwind. Yeah. So far in the... Uh, group stages and um, in Silent Storm's matches in his qualifier, I believe he has a 100% win rate against Patron with this deck. Um, but this was just a little bit too rough of a start for him to get through that early game. And another two health creature, or another two attack creature. A 100% matchup win. Oh my gosh. I think it's. I think he's three for three, against with this uh, paladin against patron. Goodness. It's a small sample size, but of three. Of three, yeah. Still, that is exceptional considering how um, some, me included, would consider this some to be like maybe seventy percent patron favored, yeah. or possibly even more. So to win three of those, that's. Uh, a good that's a combination of good paladin play, good adjustments. We saw it on Friday. We saw him beat a patron on Friday with it. Uh he beat the patron warrior of Privet? No, oh, yes, I remember that one. That was just yeah. a really strong uh opening from Silent Storm. Yeah. He went like one drop, two drop, three drop, four drop, five drop, yep. something. Ah, 
Yeah, this one's looking like it's not going to go down that path, though. Unless Quartermaster, yeah. which is unfortunately not in Silent Storm's deck, supposedly. Dart had to be feeling a little scared, though, because even though we've been saying no Quartermaster in Silent Storm's deck, uh, you never know, there might be one. Soundstorm if could throw a wrench in the plants and say, ha ha ha, I tell everybody that my deck has no quartermasters and then I'll throw in a quartermaster. Um, I think Dart knows because his teammate, the rat, in his qualifier on Thursday ran nearly the exact same deck as Soundstorm with zero quartermasters, double owl, double Argus. Um, so I'm sure they um, are privy to the deck. Still no Warsong Commander, still no Patron. But yeah. I don't think it's really going to matter that much because Salastorm just doesn't have pressure to apply. He, his board is going to get pretty much cleared here. Ooh. That is patience from Dart's side. He's willing to take an extra 7 damage uh, just to save that Whirlwind effect for a turn. And... I can understand it because if he draws Warsong Commander, he wins. If he draws Patron, he pretty much wins, according to Silent Storm's hand. Um, but man, that taking of 8 damage is dangerous. Very dangerous. Silent Storm might feel inclined to throw something else out, but he realizes that... Probably not the best idea. He'll only get one draw off his battle rage. No more cycle left. If he picks up a dud here, all of a sudden he's back to square one. Oh, there's a Warsong Commander. He's got a count. Oh, was that enough, this. though, since he had to spend two for the battle rage? It's enough. <laughs> How is he going to get past the, the <coughs> ooze? That's the tough part, the slime. Uh, Warsong Commander. doesn't have a way to do it. Oh, no. Oh, he, does, he, three, six, he does, but he can only play one uh, Frothing Berserker. If he plays Warsong Commander, the two ma two mana Frothing Berserker, he can play Unstable Ghoul, charging in, and then Whirlwind on the backside. But then again, I don't think that would be enough if he does it. Yeah, Ooh, that wouldn't so be enough. Wow. It's like, oh boy. Sounds uh, Dart is just waiting for next turn to win, so he's hoping he doesn't die this turn. That's three, four, five, six, ten damage. Um, and here is the lack of burst from the Paladin deck. It's a good read from Dart. Um, that Paladin deck usually runs only exactly one burst card, Blessing of Kings, which has been used. And there's True Silver Champion, which is a burst card, but he has it equipped. The only thing that Dark could realistically lose to right now would be Double Consecration. And I think we actually saw one of the matchups end with a Double Consecration burst, but uh, the Soundstorm doesn't have it that time. And the patience of Dart pays off. Indeed it does. And that should do it. Soundstorm sort of just knows. Perhaps instead of knowing, it's more of being very hopeful. Because sometimes they whiff. Uh, like, yes, I somehow managed to win this matchup. It's rough. <laughs> and the Aldar Peacekeeper that Silencer threw out as well. I mean, look, he got close. One health? That ends his game yep. at one health. Um, and to be honest, if Silencer did have Consecration and he used it, Dart wouldn't have enough mana to win. Um, I think he could have cleared and seen. Yeah. He would have had yeah, one that's less certainly mana. possible. So, In fact, it would have. That's right. Very close game. Yeah, very, very close. And uh, Dart, that game, if he had drawn a little bit better, could have been not so close, but his Warsong Commander would have... Uh, been earlier in a sec. It was pretty late. So Dart is just one game away now. A hunter went away from securing his spot in the finals where he'll be one match closer to going to the grand finals at PAX. Silencer now has to beat the hunter twice in a row with both Druid and Paladin. It is doable, but it is tough. 
Yep. If there's one matchup I really would like, though, uh, if I'm Silent Storm, it would be exactly this Paladin against the Hunter. Uh, it's got the double defender of Argus for extra safety past what you're used to, and it's still got Chows also to contest the early game of the Hunter. Mm -hmm. uh, I say Chows, but possibly there is just Chow. Just one. Just one Chow. And um, Druid is a little bit tougher. Wow, looks like it is mid-range. So I'd say that pal this Paladin deck is probably even stronger <laughs> against mid-range. Cards like Eldar Peacekeeper just wreck Savannah High Mains. Um, they just have a lot of tools to deal with the shenanigans of mid-range Hunter early on. Lots of small sort of like tokens. Start. Chow yeah. in the mini bot. The yep. uh, dream, pretty much. If only he had a muster for battle. Sludge Boucher's decent. He is going to need to find a way to deal with the hot, the inevitable high main. Mm -hmm. Paladins have one of the best answers in the form of Aldor. Uh, just needs to pick it up before then. Or even just control the board and then consecration. Interesting that Silent Storm is thinking about this turn. Um, probably thinking about whether or not to trade with the spider, I would suspect. Yeah. There's two reasons to trade. One is Knife Juggler, the other is Glaive Zuka, and then a final reason is just to kill it quicker. There's reasons not to trade also. Mainly that now the uh, zombie chow can just die to these two guys. Yeah, Glevzuka does um, end up clearing the board. So Dart has thwarted the good early start from from Silent Storm. Yeah, Pretty Glevzuka is such a monster in the early game. Uh, Creeper Glevzuka, what a combination! Picks up the second mini bot. What more could you ask for? Oh wow. Okay, so a little bit of a hybrid deck from Darts, not full mid range. Uh, Glavezuka was a good indication of that. Sometimes mid range hunters will put in a Glavezuka just for, like you said, that early game board control is is second to none uh, with the Glavezuka as far as weapons go. Um, but Arcane Gom definitely shows that it is it does have some hybrid elements going on. Yeah, Ooh, that's Misha. been curving pretty well. Interesting. Yeah, I'll own that. He's going to be in a really good board state going into the high main turn, which is exactly what you want to happen as a as a hunter player. So this high main is most likely going to come down on a board that um, is at least even for Dart, because Soundstorm does have Lothab next turn. Yeah, there's a big consideration for Dart right now. Does he want to kill off the Shielded Minibot or not? If he does kill it off, uh, none of his guys die. And then the Misha is protected against just a 3-5. But it, if he doesn't do it, that's a good amount of damage. And uh, he does still have the Glaive Zuka to finish off the Minibot. Ah, this is... Misha is probably the toughest one to deal with here. I guess Liak would have allowed Dart to kill the Sludge Belcher without using Owl, but Misha, there's n not really a good trade here. Yep, it is uh, good for Silent Storm that he does have the Consecration. That's going to play a really key part. How much damage is he going to take, though? A lot. I guess only four. Not too much. And Sunstorm is going to be forced to trade his five drop. Oh, Aldor Peacekeeper. That is a big one. The direct counter to Savannah High Main. I think yesterday we were chatting about like, oh man, what even beats Savannah High Main? And we came up with Polymorph, but Elder Peacekeeper is, uh, ranks up there. Yeah, definitely. You still have to worry about the 2-1, two one, uh, two ones eventually, 
because once you peacekeeper it, unless you're going to kill it that turn, silence is not really an option because it gets rid of the, um, basically give the high main a chance to stop following the rules. This is a lot of damage to start want to push. If he does push, he'll for sure get punished. Yeah, he also has to look at the opposing board and his health. He's like, wow, that's 11. I'm at 20. So Paladin's got a bit of teeth. Uh, he wants to plan it out so that he loses the minimum to Consecration. And he might come... Well, it's kind of good to use the high main to kill the Knife Juggler. One, because the Knife Juggler is actually a threat. Uh, but then again, you have the weapon also. And if you use the high main, then the Lothev doesn't get as good a trade. He just goes for it. Wow. And this is going to hurt. This is going to be most likely a full board clear, depending on what comes out of the Shredder. Um, if Soundstorm decides to go for it, I mean, he can also decide to go for a, a sort of more aggressive line with Dr. Boom. He will get three juggles. But that's really risky, especially since he's at 12 health. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and see where the juggle goes first. And now we're going to see the trades happen. And he was he got the juggle first because he knew he was going to be trading in... Oh, no. Ouch. Oh, that's ouch. A game. Wow. That's the... That is the worst card that he could have gotten. And Dart, to be uh, to be fair, uh, Dart actually had an equal either way. Yeah, but this makes uh, Silent Storm feel particularly salty. Yeah, it it doesn't really matter. Uh, I was gonna say Dart conceals the Arcane Golem, but um, it is game point, so he's not gonna need it anyway. And uh, what a rough way to go out! But Dart is going to take the series four to two, and Dart's gonna move on to the finals. One match away. It's all it's gonna take for Dart. To get to that grand finals at PAX, he's going to face the winner between Chalky and Strife Crow, which is going to be the match that's coming up next. And, I mean, that was a pretty rough matchup for Silentstorm. What did you think of that match, Trump? Man, it's uh, Silentstorm got that one drop, two drop. The only thing he was missing was Muster for Battle. That would have been really mm -hmm. good. Um, man, it was rough. Uh, Dart just pushed in for a lot of damage and... At some times, it looked like it was going to be just enough, but a lot of these games were represented by like the perfect finish, using exactly all their cards to win the game. Yeah, it's uh, Darts bringing out the Hybrid Hunter as his fourth deck worked out very well for him. And Soundstorm, he put up a good fight yesterday. He had some pretty impressive performances. His his lineup worked out pretty well, even without the patient. But he is going to fall. He will go away with seven hundred fifty dollars. And, um, yeah, just $750. The Geico points aren't really relevant for Soundstorm at this point because he has no point of getting second place, but uh, still a decent showing for him. As always, guys, a reminder to head over to geico.onog.gg. We're still doing the official TSM PC giveaway, and you can always head over to that website and get a Geico quote as well. Enter in for some, for some Geico newsletters. really helps uh, support us and uh, support uh, a Geico who's... Uh, giving us a lot of, of, of opportunities in esports by, by getting into the scene. So make sure you guys head over and do that. We are going to take a quick break before we jump into the second semifinal of the day. Chaggy vs. Strife Crow coming up next. <laughs> 